Um, so what I thought I'd do, first of all, is just read a wee bit from the observations, because um, it sort of helps me get warmed up a wee bit. And uh, So really, you don't need to know much if you haven't read it. I know that looks like it comes from the middle of the book, but basically this is the first time that the narrator tells us much about herself, really. She's, she's been quite... She's told us a lot, but she hasn't really told us about her past. And this is the first time that Bessie... She's 15, she's Irish, she's in Scotland. Um, she's a kind of a serving maid. This is the first time she tells us about her, her past. Uh, <clears throat> but perhaps now I'm at it, I should say something more of my early life, what I know of it. Till this day, my father's identity remains something of a mystery. According to my mother, and a few that knew her from the old days back across the water, he was a sailor from the north that went by the name Whacker McPartland. Not his real name, of course, that was Dan, but apparently he preferred to be called Whacker. According to my mother, there was never a couple so devoted as herself and himself, Bridget O'Toole and Whacker, they were love's young dream. Whacker was as handsome as the day is long and a marvellous dancer to boot, the jig his favourite. And he only had eyes for my mother, so he did, and guarded her most jealously. Indeed, on one occasion that my father, sorry, that my mother would often proudly recount, Whacker, having drunk too much at a penny reel, was overcome with nausea in the middle of a dance but would not leave the hall to vomit, as that would have meant abandoning her to be spun around by rivals. So instead, what did he do but cleverly book up his own sleeve, <laughs> button the cuff, and continue the jig, only thereafter with one arm held casually aloft. <laughs> if you listened to my mother, this man my father wanted but two things in life, one to be dancing and two to have her pinned to the wall by his jack, upon which organ, by her account, you could have hung a pack saddle. <laughs> Strange to say, as soon as old Whacker discovered that the love of his life was carrying a child, away off he jigged out of town, taking his jack with him, <laughs> never to be seen or heard again. Well, I don't suppose his jack made a sound. Mind you, perhaps it knickered. <laughs> As for my mother Bridget, due to a fondness for Dutch gin and various knocks to the head, her recollection of the past was shocking, and in her time she claimed variously that I was born on a Tuesday or perhaps a Thursday in April or more likely May. It was the middle of the night or just before tea time. This was in the year 47, 48 or 49, <laughs> and the birth took place in either Dundalk or Drogheda, or possibly somewhere else altogether. How am I supposed to remember all that? My mother would cry if ever I asked about the circumstances. I was in pain. I was giving birth. It began with a D, D something. Was it Donica D? But wherever we were, and whenever it was, she was absolutely certain of one detail, and that was that she was in the middle of a fight when I came out. In her melancholy cups, when I was only small, she'd fix me with a watery gaze and declare, look at you, you were born with wigs on the green, a notion that caused me a certain amount of confusion at the time. One other thing she does remember is that while she was carrying me, she took a powerful notion to smoke a pipe. Any time I asked about my birth, it was this first pipe that my mother went on about, claiming that it was only the very final puff of the very last little ember in the bowl that gave her any pleasure whatsoever. Jesus Murphy, the pounds of tobacco she had to smoke her way through with dogged determination in order every time to get down to that final glowing little coal. It was a wonder, she used to say, that when I came to term I had a child at all and not a flipping fall of soot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.